Thank you. Um, so um, before we got started, um, you showed me the outside of the museum, and I hope it's not what crashed um, our connection, but could we see outside again now that everyone is signed in? Mohamed, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you now. Um, it's got to be. Yeah, we were, I, I stopped my video feed to maybe uh, give a little bit more bandwidth. Um, can you show us the, um, uh, can you show us around the museum a little bit? Of course. Yes. So what do we see? All right, um, Mohamed, what are we looking at? Okay, now we are in front of the cars of the president. It's Mercedes 600. Uh, it's returned to 1964. Uh, Habibogiba, not Habibogiba, but the state of Tunisia bought two types of these uh, cars, which is Mercedes limousine. And uh, it was the first example from uh, this type of uh, cars, which we can see inside how it can be but before i present you my colleague mohammed najib al ajmi he is our joker in our museum hello <laughs> hi so this is the cars inside Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Abi Bourguiba's um, legacy on Tunisia? Of course, we will speak about him. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure I can see correctly what we're looking at at this moment. Because uh, we have such problem with light, with light of uh, day, that we cannot uh, open very well to constant. So we have uh, some difficult between lights for this reason. We uh, to consult this collection, we should to uh, put in darkness because uh, for uh, safe uh, targets. But for Habib Bourguiba, who is our first president, he bo born in 2000, Habib Bourguiba was uh, education in uh, Tunis with modern education. What we say about modern middle education, it means that we have such traditional and modern. For the traditional was based only about Quran and some Islamic uh, education. However, the modern was based on uh, science or language and uh, he was uh, studies in uh, college uh, Sadiki in uh, Tours. After he go, finished his uh, secondary school, he moved to France to uh, to France to finish his uh, science and returned to Tunisia to get our freedom. And uh, persons who uh, worked about peace politics was based only about. Uh, about making a relationship with uh, the war and especially during the, the 1960s we know that it was the cold war between us and uh, russia and he was very clever he stayed in the middle position and said i am in front of everyone i don't want to be in uh, uh, belong in such uh, polls because he knew that he will be victim of any first economic shock so for this season he said that i am friend of everyone my politics is based on peace and today after the revolution thanks to Habib Bourguiba that we could succeed without any problem without any victims without any brutes
part of such cultural significance, how do you prepare your visitors to enjoy their visit at the same time as respecting some of the um, um, formal and religious aspect of the environment? Are there restrictions? No, that uh, today with coronavirus, we should respect the protocol of uh, healthy that we wear masks, we put gel, and we be far from each other, that uh, we not be uh, open for everyone, should be by small groups. So today, because of co coronavirus, but before, because this uh, castle was very small castle, so we, uh, groups should be very small uh, groups, that uh, 10 persons and the rest should be waiting outside to admire the environment about oasis, about sea, about uh, gardens uh, outside. So for this season, we should uh, prepare everyone to come here that he should know that it's not uh, as the others uh, museum that is big and can uh, receive uh, very long uh, persons. So we put this uh, politics that uh, small groups to save collections and also to give more place, important place for this uh, museum. Can you let us know about, I, I know we had a really good interest in, in the equality of male and female in Tunisia. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, excuse me, the sound was cut. Please, can you repeat? Oh, yes. Um, I know the leader was very interested in equality between male and female. Yes, yes. Can you tell us about yes. that? Yes, of course. I will show you these photos of these ladies who is making such experience during in the uh, Pasteur uh, Institute. This institute is uh, specialized for vaccines and uh, for uh, medicine, for example, he said that when we will give good place for ladies, society will be safe. For these reasons, when during his fighting against France and he put in exile in the desert, he got with him a book of Tahar Haddad is uh, this is very uh, clever who is uh, written and he saw that about uh, defend uh, read these uh, ideas then later he applicates these ideas and today uh, the Tunisian lace has very good rights and uh, we are equality for everything she can uh, ask divorce, she can uh, get uh, to work, she can uh, have uh, Switzerland. And uh, from 1960, family based on the statue of uh, with someone who is not Muslim. No, but based on Hadiburgiba thoughts before. Um, so we have a question from uh, one of our interns, Nadia. She asks, since the institution is under heritage spots, do you curate um, exhibits that are more contemporary around social team or do you keep it very historical? Okay. Uh, we only make versions should be related with the topic of uh, the persons. It means about the But uh, for example, last uh, the 3rd of August, the birthday of Hiburgiba, made a scientific uh, journey about the second of this palace. And after it, we put such uh, uh, exhibition about such photos, how we believe that 
lived in uh, this palace during the from 1963 uh, to 1917 so during seven years it was not very uh, it was temporary exhibitions but related with the topic uh, all the time for the people give or no the exhibitions should can be for heritage uh, thoughts his uh, his suggestions something like Three years apart okay the memorial checked his infrastructure part does the memorial get its infrastructure checked because it's a history okay. time of course, yes. Uh, the institute, uh, the National Institute of Heritage of Tunis, has very expert people who are uh, uh, specialized in architectures, in restorations, in uh, conservations, in geographies. So everyone has his specialized and they work together as a team because uh, I will not uh, hide the secret to say that from 1987 to 2000, this place was closed without any any uh, work of uh, reparations so when we start to make this uh, museum as uh, as a museum we found many many damage so we put our experts tunisian experts they come here and they start work as a teamwork and the result that they finished the first part uh, to change the and we are now waiting for the second part that we will make the the old and our next month i think december is cultural heritage month can you tell us a little bit about that can you hear me Yes, I hear you, but I don't know what about you. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Now I can hear you. So what I was asking is, I, I think uh, you mentioned that it was Cultural Heritage Month in December in Tunisia. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, that I said that our uh, colleagues from the National, uh, Heritage, uh, the National Institute of Heritage, they was uh, a team of work someone who is worked about repellation, about uh, architectures, or about how they will uh, look after these uh, buildings. And the others was worked about, about uh, how they will repair, how they will uh, conserve, because we have such different ways. The, this place is very near to the sea. So the volume of humidity is very, very high. So, and we should keep it. And we have also uh, sofas and uh, carpets, and we cannot open all the time uh, the window because we can uh, lose the colors. So all the time they are working about this safe of uh, conditions to save our uh, collections. Wonderful. So um, you sent me a few pictures um, earlier, and I, I prepared a little bit of a PowerPoint. Um, since we have some connection issues, um, would you would you want to just sit down and I will show the image that you sent me and maybe you can tell us what we're looking at? Okay. I'm going to give you a second to find a spot that's comfortable for you. Now, uh, guys, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. Um, and let me start sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. Right here. Um, they're not in any specific order. I just basically put them together okay. as you said. Okay, we will move there. Last few minutes, a uh, few seconds. Okay. Okay, this is what we call the Morocco Lounge. 
Why we say that Morocco launched? Because it was gift from the king of uh, Morocco. He came here and make this type of sofa. And we see reflects the traditional Andalus. Andalus, it means from people who escaped from uh, Spain to the North Africa. And Tunisia received many, many people from uh, Andalusia, and uh, they got very high place in the, in the state as minister or something like and also uh, the king of Tunisia gave the lands and these lands we have uh, they come with their uh, well known and uh, they gave uh, uh, heritage today that we say that this is a heritage is we will see these people um, this that's, is that's interesting that's good um and is that the outside of the museum uh, excuse me um and so the photo uh, i don't know if you can see right now but the photo on the screen i, I think is the outside of the museum is that what we see can you hear me Yes, we will be in front of the museum. So this is the facade, the principal facade and the principal door uh, of the uh, museum that we will see the flag of our country, Tunisia, and we will see our these uh, palms, we, which give us dates. And uh, uh, France was a uh, maritime uh, oasis, which we choose as a place to build this uh, castle to uh, to get the, the weather, the nice weather, because during the summer will be fresh and during the, the winter will be uh, warm. Are, are these three native of Tunisia or have they been planted uh, to create an oasis? No, no, are natural. They're all natural. Oh, wow. It yes. looks very Miami. <laughs> <laughs> so for these seasons, we are all humans, so we, can, we will find such uh, common points between Tunisia and the uh, US. <laughs> really? <laughs> How about this? Wow. OK. This is the last project we did with uh, cooperation between associations and between uh, the museum. It was the loot. The loot is in the shape used to be given to run away from uh, French army, from uh, the islands named Karakna, from Karakna to Libya. Then from Libya, he used uh, to, uh, he moved to uh, Egypt. Then from Egypt, he moved to uh, U.S. to present our uh, process during the uh, United Nations to say that Tunisia should get her uh, its freedom so we was uh, people uh, wanted to save this uh, events and this shape so they made a copy of uh, and uh, they came this uh, copy and they put and to say okay this is some of uh, activities of Hibergiba which we offer to the museum and it was that we opened the door that everyone can offer something for the museum to save our memory, to save our heritage. Wow. Yes. Now we'll move to the, I would say, to the private office. This private office, the best that we will see in life. So follow me, please. Um, currently, I can't see your camera, uh, Mohammed. I can't see Sorry? your camera right now. And now we are in this private office. Do you hear me? Uh... I can hear you, but uh, we can't see your video right now. And now? 
No, I can't see your video. Do you want me to just continue showing pictures? No, I will show someone. Okay. Um, I, I, I still can't see your video though. Do you, if you want, we can sit down and I can keep showing the pictures you sent me earlier and you can talk about what we see on the screen. Okay, okay. It would be more, I think that I have problem with connections. Yeah, I think it might be easier. So let me go back to the PowerPoint and you can um, show me, you can tell me what we see. Let me do this, share, share. And I was there. So what do we see now? Is it a meeting room or is it a, uh, a dining room? This is, uh, yes, this is the uh, meeting room that we uh, use to receive his uh, ministers as officials uh, meeting. And also when he has uh, lunch for his visitors, he used this very large table. However, when he is uh, with his small family, he used the smallest table, which is uh, it's not this big table, but the others. Um, can you tell us what the art on the wall on the right and left is? There seems to be very intricate artwork on the wall, and it's very modern. Mohammed, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Mohammed, now I can uh -huh. hear you. Um, I, I was asking you about the artwork. Um, I see a lot of very intricate um, um, patterns we saw them in the meeting room we see them on the screen right now uh, there are palm trees can you tell us a little bit about that art hello <laughs> uh the sound cut please can you repeat because yes. i have such problem with connections yes i'm sorry um can you tell us a little bit about the art um that we see on the wall it's very intricate yes it was this uh, type of uh, art, we say that these are uh, carpets, but it's not the, when we say about carpet, we will speak about the very high quality, which is carpet is famous in Kirwan. But now we are speaking about the carpet, more or less, we name it Margum. This type was ma made by hands of uh, ladies. But the, at the beginning, it should be something uh, simple as red color or some primitive uh, shapes. However, with these scarves, we are saying as a story that we will have these uh, gases, which is uh, drinking water with these palms, with the green uh, color. It means that we can give life for our handcrafts and which should be transmit for new uh, generation and not be uh, worried that we will lose this uh, well known because when we will uh, work about the new topics that we will save these uh, products of uh, handcrafts. That's beautiful. Um, I imagine that's the bathroom. I don't see. Uh, oh, the image we see on the screen right now is um, a bathtub with a bathrobe. Which we are looking now is uh, this door of the private places mm -hmm. and this door of the public. Oh. And this is for the public where we see this type of carpets from this way. Um, are all the material used in the palace sourced in Tunisia or all around the world? For the marble, are from all the world, for the marble. However, for the sofas and for the carpets are from Tunisia. Mm -hmm. For the iron was made also from Tunisian hands. Mm -hmm. As you see this nice door with this decoration of flowers, of these uh, chickens, and this type of uh, big door are made from Tunisian hands. And even the person who did, he came with his family 
and he say that I did during 1962 with my colleagues and he start to speak about this uh, experience to make this work of iron, not only the door, but also for the stairs. You see? Yes, right now we see the staircase. Um, and is the iron work um, a specific pattern of the country or was it created specifically for the museum? We see it on the floor as well. No, at the beginning, this is palace is for the country. But later, when Habib Bourguiba is dead, without to commemorate his uh, presence, so to convert his uh, palace as a museum to the people to see how he lived, and what Tunisia had during this time, and uh, which we can, uh, which lessons we can get from uh, this palace. Lovely. All right, we are going on to 45 minutes. So um, I, I, I'm ready to um, start wrapping up. There are a few things you wanted to tell us about a new discovery that happened um, in, in your country recently uh, do you want to talk about that about um, about the um, the mosaic and the sites that you uh, mentioned in our first meeting okay Tunisia is lucky country that uh, is very rich by mosaics and uh, when we say Tunisia we say three thousand three uh, thousand of uh, history Many civilizations came here and uh, let its uh, trace as uh, mosaics. So, uh, especially every day, we can find mosa uh, mosaics in uh, Tunisia, and each mosaic can give us new lessons and gives us new uh, information for uh, to understand our uh, heritage relationship between Tunisia and the other of the, the world, how people uh, live during this uh, time. Wow, beautiful. Um, so I would like to let my people ask their questions before I let you go. Um, so people in the room, do you have any questions for Mohammed? Yes, I have a question. You are welcome. Um, Wait, one, one second. <laughs> um, it will be, how far forward do they plan for a collection opening? Uh, excuse me? How far, how far forward do they plan for a collection opening? Like, when you guys have a collection that you guys are about to um, show, how far do you guys plan for that? Yeah, how far in advance do you start curating a new exhibit? Okay, so <clears throat> it will be such meeting with our uh, boss of uh, museums, uh, development of museums in uh, Tunisia. We will, someone will introduce this uh, idea. We will call for architects, we will call for uh, researchers, we will call for a conservator, and we will start to think how, uh, and uh, ask uh, questions which uh, collection we will exhibit and why and for uh, which uh, type of uh, public. So it will be such meetings and we will put uh, the common points and after it we will choose the place and we will start to work and we will announce about uh, these exhibitions and we will receive uh, public to see these uh, collections. And um, what is your favorite piece in your museum? For me, my favorite piece is the office, the private office, because uh, we have such uh, secret inside as uh, decorations, as uh, he can, he has the habit to uh, read every day, every night, book, but in darknesses. You know how? No. So, the secrets that we have such uh, lights in the ceiling, as uh, the light as in the plane today, 
and from his desk he can has to make light only two pages of books and all the rest will be in darknesses and today the science prove that electricity uh, has bad uh, influence about concentrations so for the, for me this place i I like very much because it gives uh, not only that the important per a person, but also about the health of persons, which uh, is improved today. But it, I have, I am proud that I had it in my country, in uh, my museum today. Wow, how interesting. Is, is the entire collection in view or do you have object in storage somewhere else? Of course, of course. Of course, I will not expose everything. That which exposed today is something which is used for uh, the habit. But I have other uh, objects which I cannot expose now because I have a problem of conservations. For example, I cannot expose the painting because it can be damaged by the light of the day. So for me, the, I have to prepare the good environment then I will expose. This is one task. The second, I will uh, use the, the other's object for temporary exhibitions. So if I will expo uh, exhibit everything, tomorrow I will not have someone other to come. And my uh, target, that the public come and come and come again to the museum to discover new, new collections. Thank you so much. This is so um, just fascinating. I love what I'm hearing this morning. Um, but I had a couple questions. The first one, since you're talking about conservation, I'm not sure if you mentioned if you have a conservator on site at the museum or how do you kind of navigate making sure that you're taking care um, of these pieces so that they can last? Oh, we just lost your feed, Mohamed. Um, how will you say that? I am conservator, but no, no, I will, I will not say, uh, I will say the truth. But the meaning of the conservator is not the same thing as the American system, because in Tunisia we have the same of conservator as the French uh, system. But for me, for, if I will uh, say for the American system, I will be curator, I will not be conservator. However, in my uh, office, and then uh, the National uh, Heritage of uh, the National Institute of Heritage, we have a very big and very nice professional team of conservations, and they make very very treasures that we recuperate during thanks to their uh, work. And I am proud by my colleagues who are working about conserving. So when I will need someone to conserve, I will call and they will come and conserve. Um, the next question is in the chat. How does the government support the memorial to survive? And has it changed considering the COVID-19 situation? Okay, during the first uh, wave of the COVID, everything was closed. No one was uh, working, except my team of security, which I say hello to them, which I thank them very, very much because without them, we could not save our museum and this by chance i said to them thank you very much again my colleagues of uh, security then later when we won about uh, the first with uh, COVID, we opened we start to make new protocol of uh, this COVID, which we can open the museum for public and we save ourselves from this uh, COVID. so it was this is the the work how we can do and uh, especially today we can say that we succeed in very much that we receive people and we save ourselves from uh, this COVID. and wow. this is it was of course was slow from uh, government wow um we have a personal question about your career you kind of do it all you are a director of a museum you work for the government um in tourism you were a tour guide um uh, we're interested in knowing what you believe is the best part of your job okay for 
I will be honest with you, to be a uh, tour guide is a hobby for me. I do with uh, as a hobby, as not a professional. But to exercise this work, I should have professional uh, documents from uh, tourism uh, ministry. So I got this document to do my hobby. The first, this work as tour guide gave, gave me many uh, information about the behavior of public. And uh, of course, during my work with them, I discuss with them and especially with foreign people. So I know which they like, which they don't like. And I will try to do in my museum. For example, where we go to other archaeological sites and I see their uh, notice that this is good and this is uh, not good, I will try to repeat them the same thing, that which they like it, I will do something here, but it will be something positive point to improve my museum. And if something is uh, not good, I will correct and it will be also something uh, good for uh, my museum. So I try to hear, and after I will make my decision to uh, do something good for uh, the museum, of course. Mm, that's fascinating. So how is the, the leader uh, remembered by the citizen of Tunisia, and how does your institution shape that, that story? No one can delay the memory of Habib Bourguiba from Tunisian uh, people. So everyone, even the people who doesn't know him, when he will say, speak about Bourguiba, will say, this is the leader. And today, we are working with children to, uh, who are born uh, after the death of uh, Bourguiba, that to say this memory, to say, this is our legend, this is our leader, and what he did for us, and what we should uh, thank him, and we should do something to save his work. Because Habib Bourguiba said in one speech, with, uh, in newspapers, I remember that he said that, I think that I did something hard, which will be for new and new generations. And I think that he was uh, true because today when everyone is uh, speaking about uh, Bourguiba, even the people who are, are against his politics, but they cannot say that Habib Bourguiba, they cannot delay the memory of Habib Bourguiba from uh, the history of uh, Tunisia. And for us, it's something related as heritage. It's not only person or only president. No, for, I will speak of, about, for my point of view, for me, Habib Bourguiba, is legend. It's fascinating. He certainly has a great legacy. Well, Mohammed, we're going, um, uh, we're reaching the end of the hour. Um, I would like to thank you, thank you so much for your time. Um, sorry for the difficulty, but we're reaching each other across the world. Um, so I'm, I'm so grateful for your time and your efforts in, in organizing this tour for us. And, and please let us return the favor. Okay, you are welcome and uh, I am very happy to meet you and I, I think that, I hope that I succeed to send such positive vibes from Tunisia to Miami to say about uh, our heritage, to about our uh, history, who is not only for this museum, when we see, uh, speak about three uh, thousand years of history, so we will speak about Roman, about Punic, about Vandal, about Turkish, about French, about uh, Hafsid, about Muslim, about Spanish, about Maltin, about Italian. So everyone is coming here in Tunisia and he put their uh, traces on this land, which today that I am proud to say that I am Tunisian, that I can speak with everyone. I can say, okay, my history has and has and has. And also to say that Habib Bourguiba offered to the United Nations very big mosaics, which now is offered and say that this is gift from Tunisian people to the world. Well, thank you so much. It sure made me feel like visiting as soon as we can get out of the country again. Yes, me too, I hope. And uh, you are welcome at any moment for new projects.
I'll reach out. Thank you so much. You have you a welcome. good end of your day. It's almost happy hour for you. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, I hope you enjoy our tour. We have a few more coming. The other ones are closer in proximity. Um, we are going to Vizcaya next. Um, and then and, um, in a month, we're going to visit the Met. So the invitations are going to come out. If you want to come, please join us. Bye. Have a good end of your day. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs> Bye, Mohamed. <laughs>